All right, how to reset the 500i after air and exhaust mods. So I bought this saw brand new and when I picked it up, I got the Max Flow and the Bark Box for it. And I asked the mechanic at the saw shop um, if I needed to wait till I broke it in or if I could just install the parts and, and fire it up. And he said, yeah, go for it. Uh, it's not gonna hurt the saw. So I get home. I install the parts super quick, super easy, and I want to fire the thing up and I go, oh crap, I need to recalibrate this thing uh, to account for, you know, more air and, uh, and better exhaust flow. So I go to call the shop and of course they're closed. So, and if you're anything, if you're anything like me, you'll take the manual and you'll throw it out or hide it from yourself and, and, uh, and don't take the time to to read through the thing so so i call up the shop they're closed and i jump online and i'm figuring that you know you jump online you're going to figure out uh, how to recalibrate the 500 uh, real quick and easy so it's amazing to me how difficult it is to find out how to recalibrate or or reset this saw with how simple it is so basically all you got to do is well still says on page 56 in their troubleshooting guide, um, recalibrate the engine to ambient conditions by performing five uniform bucking cuts at full throttle. So I didn't find that information uh, the night that I put the thing together. And I woke up the next morning, I called the saw shop and he said, yeah, just run it, just run it. It's, it doesn't matter, there's, there's no recalibration to it. Um, the saw is going to do, do its own thing. The, the computer and the saw will figure it all out. So that got me thinking, why has still made it so difficult for you to find out that, that there's nothing that you have to do to reset the saw. And, and I think it comes down to, to pretty basic, um, marketing, uh, you know, a lot of old timers, they, they want to be able to grab a uh, screwdriver and turn the screws. You know, they want, they want to be able to tune their saw and to have a saw that you can't work on uh, to tune, you know, of course you can fix mechanical issues, but to have a saw that you can't tune yourself, that takes away, um, you know, a certain sense of control. And I think that that'll divert some people. Um, so of course with the Mtronics, you know, they make it clear you, you fire it up at high idle for 30 seconds, shut it off, wh whichever version you have. Um, but with this saw, literally, you don't have to do anything. Now, don't take my word for it. Um, there's a lot of great sites out there that have really good information on this saw. And, and to, to understand that there's really nothing that you have to do, you got to dig through these sites uh, to, to understand that. So, like I said, don't take my word for this. You know, use your brain, go out and do your research. If you're, if you're messing with a $1,800, $2,000 setup, it's probably good that you, you do your research and just don't listen to a guy off of YouTube. I'm not a mechanic. So with that being said, I've ran a stock 500 at work for the past year. It's a phenomenal saw. We've never had to recalibrate it. I've never had any issues. I've never had the hot start issues, uh, cold start issues, anything. Clean the air filter, put oil in it, put gas in it, and run it. Um, in my opinion, it's the best saw that Steel's ever made. So I sold my 461 to buy this thing and I think I'll keep this for the rest of my life. So I hope this information helped you guys out. Again, it's page 56 in the 500i manual. Uh, see you guys next time.